man you see here is named George A. Custer. Less than a hundred years ago, he led his men in a final battle against the Indians, which history has come to know as Custer's last stand. He was young for a general, but he earned his rank, fighting battle after battle on the side of the Yank. In the war with the South, and the Indians too, he fought against the Pawnee and the Cheyenne and the Sioux, and he won. <laughs> Then in 75, when the gold rush came, in the Black Hills of Dakota, folks are staking their claim. Settlers moved right in, but they knew, all right, the Redskins would be putting up a good, hard fight. And they did. <laughs> so the word went out, and the troops came in, every man full of spirit and a will to win. And they looked, and they saw in the early morn about 1,500 engines and a little big horn. So they thought... <laughs> So they thought, but the scouts had guessed wrong. For there in that river valley were banded together about 5,000 Indians. The largest gathering of hostile tribes in Western history. But Custer's choice was a general's choice. And he spoke to his men in a general's voice. We'll lose them all if we wait too long. We've got good men, 600 strong. We'll attack. <laughs> So on June 25th, 1876, a plan was drawn out of stones and sticks. The men were divided into three commands, and that legendary journey into enemy lands was begun. Major Benteen's men circled round to the back. Captain Reno moved in for a frontal attack, and the rest of the forces, under Custer's hand, headed straight for the camp through no man's land in the hills. The horn was blown, and the charge begun. The smoke and the dust blotted out. The surprise worked better than I'd ever dreamed. And the troops were winning, or so it seemed for a while. But Reno's boys had to turn and run, for the Indians outnumbered them, ten to one. Benteen made his retreat all right. It was Custer's men had to stand and fight in the hills. In the hills. Custer met that first wave of the enemy like the true soldier that he was. He even managed to fight his way up to the top of the slope with a few of his men. But that was about all. A thousand Cheyenne warriors were waiting for him. With well, the shots running out and the swords flashed bright and the tomahawk sped through the dusty light, bright red was seen in the uniform blue, but the soldiers there were soldiers true to the end. <laughs> was over soon, and the air hung still. Not a sound was heard on that fateful hill. 260 soldiers had come that day. How many were left to ride away? Not a one. And now you can see the National Monument established on the site of the Battle of the Little Bighorn, a memorial to Custer's last stand. <laughs>